Japan's summer traditions, Suzuka Eight Hours Endurance Road Race. At this circuit, a demonstration experiment for a project was underway. This apparatus is called the Power Assist Suit. When its sensors detect hand and foot movement, the motor kicks into gear to help with the task at hand. In other words, this suit will help, for example, lighten the load when lifting heavy objects. At the circuit, the pit crew had a go at their usual task wearing this suit. That is, fueling. To refuel motorcycles, the crew has to get ready by vertically lifting these tanks known as rockets. When you include the fuel, the tank weighs more than 30 kilograms. It's quite grueling work. The power assist suit was developed by a Japanese venture company, and this type of suit may become available in two years' time. What was especially difficult was making it as light and compact as possible. What helped realize the lightweight and compact size is the XGAN, the next generation power device developed by Panasonic. It's actually an 8 millimeter square transistor. Bringing about a power electronics revolution, this small device has the potential to make this happen. The Emotive Insight is a five-channel, portable, wearable device that allows you to capture and understand what's going on in your brain in real time. With the Emotive Insight, you can optimize your cognitive performance, you can measure and monitor your own or your family's mental health and fitness, and you can develop amazing new applications with the technology. We're pioneers in this field. We've listened to our user base and we've redesigned the product from the ground up. The Emotive Epoch, our first generation device, has been adopted and used in more than 100 countries worldwide across a broad spectrum of different application areas. Everything from being able to allow a child to create a 3D monster just with the fantasy of his or her mind, or allow people to create music just with the power of their thought, or to allow a patient to be rehabilitated by being able to control an electric wheelchair, or allow them to experience the ability to type or to communicate again. There have been so many amazing application areas and uses that have been transformative and life-changing. <laughs> For anyone who loves the Epoch, you'll love this product even more because we feel like we've taken not just one generational leap, but we've taken many generational leaps. We've looked at the sensor technology, we've looked at the electronics design, we've looked at the wireless communication protocol, we've looked at the overall mechanical design, we've looked at the form factor. How do we make it more affordable? How do we make it much more skeletal, much lighter weight, much easier to wear? We're really excited to offer an API and SDK to developers and researchers wanting access to the raw EEG data or to the detection algorithms to make it possible for anyone to take this innovation and create amazing new applications with the technology. Ultimately, what we want to do is to empower individuals to understand their own brain and to provide a platform for open innovation to accelerate brain research on a scale and pace that was previously unimaginable. I've been believing in this for almost the last decade and we've learned so much from our community. I mean, they're a very vocal community. They care passionately and deeply about what we've created. They've given us so much valuable insights and, and feedback around what works, what doesn't work. And we've taken all of that into account and we've really tried to reassess our assumptions and push 
that much harder, push it at that much further to try and create something that's completely revolutionary yet again. So cloaking is essentially just an optical illusion and people have been doing that for hundreds of years. There have been many high-tech approaches to uh, try and achieve cloaking and the basic idea behind these high-tech or exotic materials is to take light and have it pass around something as if it isn't there. And so we just figured a very simple way of doing that can just be using standard lenses and things that we would normally find in the lab. What we've tried to develop is a simplified version of a perfect cloaking device for small angles. And what we've done is we've simplified it to a four lens system. And as you can see, all we've used are off the shelf optics that we can get from any of the optical stores. And the great thing about this is, is it can be scalable to any size that you can make the lenses. But the most important thing that we've done so far is, this is the first device that we, we know of that can do three dimensional, continuous, multi-directional cloaking. So if you have rays that go at different angles, you can have the cloaking device still cloak it while what you see in the background is shifted accordingly without any distortion or changes. Say we place an object, in our case a ruler, in the middle. If we didn't have the lenses, we would be able to see the ruler. But what the lenses do is the lenses actually cloak the ruler. So if you were standing right here and you look straight through, what would happen is the rays would focus and then diverge out so it actually bends the light around the ruler so that you won't be able to see the ruler if you looked at it straight down. So we have slightly more complicated designs where an object can be cloaked entirely, but we've tried to simplify our design. And what we have is where the light goes through the center of the design, so that cannot be blocked. So the cloaking region is actually a ring-shaped area on the outside rather than the center. People have been fascinated with cloaking for a very long time and it's recently been a really popular thing, for example, in science fiction, also in Harry Potter, but I think people are really excited by the prospect of just being invisible. For scientists, it's also very fascinating because we can actually put math and science behind that to make that a reality. Even though that's been a difficult subject to implement, uh, it's very fascinating scientifically too. So this is RoboGlove, a robotic system that was developed with, between NASA and General Motors, a spin-off of the Robonaut 2 technology that was built into the Robonaut 2 hand and is powered based on Robonaut actuation and an external power supply. 
primary application that we were developing it for was for the uh, heavily repetitive tasks. So the, the, the best one that came to mind was assembly line workers, where you're doing a task repetitively throughout the day, every 30 to 40 seconds at a time. Some of these tasks requiring both high levels of dexterity and high levels of hand strength. RoboGlove is a separate entity. Um, it's kind of independent of everything. The one thing that is needed is battery power. Uh, we currently have a modular battery that plugs into a power case that would fit on the user's belt. This can be this single unit and power two gloves for an eight hour shift. The inside of the RoboGlove, we have a set of actuators, uh, three of them here, which pull on uh, synthetic tendons that run through the glove out to the fingers. We have a, a microcontroller, a set of sensors within the fingertips, as well as back here at the microcontroller, allow the operator to tell the glove when to close, how much to close by, and when to open back up. RoboGlove is currently set up to be just in flexure, so it just pulls the hand in closure. So any task that is needing to be grasped, held for long periods of time, somebody who is uh, handling heavy equipment, uh, moving things around, where they're, they're picking objects up, placing them somewhere, any type of situation where a normal human is working around a task that is continuous, repetitive, high, high hand strength, then this is an application that works well.